Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time again. This is the KBW Podcast. I am the assassin, AK-47, and I am who I am, and I am different from everybody else. Yes, it might seem like deja vu, but we're running it back, baby. Part two, Big Time Mike is here. We're doing it again. We know we love him. We all did, and it was great. Last week was awesome. We love Big Time Mike. We had to continue the story with him. It's been so so much fun. So here we are again. Introduce yourselves, gentlemen. I think it's about that time. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another big time edition of the KBW podcast. It's me. It's me. It's that B I G T I M E, the ankle breaking, trash talking, greatest man ever, gracious screens, the greatest sports entertainer to ever enter an arena. And it's back. Big time, Mike. And boys, I'm ready. Let's get it going. There's no way in hell I'm following that. So I'm done. Glad to be back. <laughs> And I am the best of what I do, Mr. Better Than You, uh, Cage, also known as Pro Wrestler Fuego Del Sol. And if you have been following along, you know that this beautiful pro- podcast is brought to you by the KBW membership. We no longer make money off of any of our videos anymore. But because we love KBW, because we love talking about KBW, we wanted to bring you this KBW podcast. And the way that you can support it is by signing up to the KBW membership. It's four different tiers, starting at 99 cents all the way up to 1999. If you sign up at one of those tiers, you'll get a bunch of access, talking uh, exclusive chances to ask us questions, uh, access to the KBW React in the podcast early, and an exclusive never-before-seen KBW match. I'm talking a never-before-seen KBW match that we recorded once before at the highest tier, the Difference Maker tier. We'd also If you are a KBW Difference Maker, if you are at that highest tier, you are one of our exclusive executive producers, and you get a shout-out at the beginning of the show. So I'd like to go ahead and shout-out Ash Crimson, the one-eyed god, Berto32, Leviathan King, DJ Murder, N-Y-E-R-O-H, Jax Allen, Man Ray, Cavante Bowser, Michael Baxley, and last but not least, our guest this week, Big time. Michael, I shouldn't even call him a guest anymore. You know, officially co-host, part-time co-host, whatever you want to say. Mike will be joining us more often on the KBW podcast. It's just how it goes because he 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 just he does something to the KBW podcast. You know, it's already fun. It's already a good time. But it's not big time. And he takes it to the next level and makes it big time. And that's why we're so glad to have him back. Two weeks in a row to talk that big time trash and to uh, lay the podcast ass down on everybody yeah. here we, in the KBW podcast. How you doing, Mike? Man, brother, I am doing splendid. I'm doing spectacular. Guys, we talked about last week, we're pushing that big time button. Well, now we're kicking it into second gear. It's time to go, baby. It's big time part two. 16. <laughs> I love it. And uh, I don't know if we'll go over an hour and 40 minutes this time, but we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some people like the long fight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's different. It gives you insight. And I know a lot of people have been waiting on us to touch on that mm. crossover stuff. And, you know, we touched on it a little bit. We haven't even fully delved deep into it. And maybe we wait. Maybe we get Cameron Jackson or Drew Hood oh. on here to really discuss all of the crossover stuff that we did. You know, I got to wrestle Cameron Jackson one-on-one. Then we got to do a tag match. Me and you versus Drew, Cam, and Kevin. And there's a lot of history there. A lot of it that was actually seen here on the KBW channel. Um, So there's some fun things we get to do with that. Bulldozer, we just filmed a react. He got to witness one of Big Time Mike's most brutal matches at Best in the Yard 2 with Dirty Chico. He never saw that side of Big Time Mike. What did you think of that match, Dozer? Again, I thought it was amazing. Um, Really... I think it it helped us in a lot of sense, and and maybe I didn't realize it at the time. I'm sure you two did, but it, he definitely represented KBW well. I mean, he went all the way up there. What was it, 10, 11 hours? Yeah, 10 hours. Uh, represented us, talked his trash, you know, and and he's fantastic. And again, just reiterate to why he had so much respect and why he was the final KBW champion. Uh. 
Yeah, and like in a lot of ways, he represented big time Mike well. It wasn't about KBW in a lot of senses. It's oh, like, yeah. I don't want to ever take credit for any of big time Mike's success because he went and got it on his own. But uh, oh, no, I'm glad no. to be a part of that on his journey. I'm glad to be uh, a little bit of a launching pad, even if it's not for his career, but for his love of backyard wrestling. If we helped launch that into a different dimension, I'm very thankful and grateful and proud of that. Um, but without a doubt, you know, uh, I definitely, just in my own selfish, egotistical way, hold KBW to a high standard. And he met that standard and surpassed it on multiple occasions wherever he went. And so I definitely uh, will say that he kept the reputation uh, well intact, if not built upon it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. And if anybody, if you've never, if you've never seen the crossovers, especially, especially for the KBW audience, I think it's pivotal because I think I said this on the react that version of Big Time is is my favorite to play. It's the uh, the, the chicken shit heel, rather you'd say. Um, it's it's a good story. They do a great job building up. We have a lot of promos back and forth, but it's it's a it's a great it's a it's complete opposite. It's a dichotomy to what you see the Big Time at the very beginning of KBW and even towards the end of KBW. Because in the finale, I still haven't transitioned to that to that level of Big Time yet. So that the the best in the yard two with Dirty Chico was to me the peak of this is what big time Mike was supposed to be. So I I hope everyone enjoys it. Check it out. Uh, and there's a bunch of other great matches on that card, not just mine, but uh, at, for just standing alone, if I had to put one match up to say like, Hey, this is what big time's about. That's one I'd put up there on the wall. So I enjoyed it. I'm glad I hope, I hope everybody else gets to watch it and they get to kind of share Cause uh, there again, some, it may not be some people's cup of tea because there again, there's all kind of matches on that card. There's some some really good wrestling matches on that card, but this one to me is not just the storytelling, but the brutality, right? Because we don't pull any punches, and we're beating the hell out of each other. He beats yeah. the hell out of me, and I beat the hell out of him. And it's a, it, it's almost like a, you know, I heard I was listening to something this week where Jr. was talking about Jim Ross was talking about you know some people they love wrestling, but people just relate when they see people fighting, they can relate to that instantly because they see yeah. it like at the ballpark at church. Home when they see two people yeah. fighting and they hate each other, that's instant. I can relate to that. I mean, oh, no doubt. Yeah. So and that's one of the reasons, honestly, you could argue that Stone Cold pops so much. Absolutely. He was a brawler. He, he just the hell out. That's right. You he know, the hell out of people. So. That's right. Well, that's a good uh, jumping off point because what we had a couple questions that we didn't get to on the pod last week, and one of those is like, which wrestlers you loved growing up. Not who you based your style off of necessarily, which we can follow up with that, but who did you love growing up? Really give us a rundown. When did you start watching wrestling? What is your first memory of pro wrestling? Give us a little bit of backstory Let's on see. Big Time Mike's introduction to so, pro wrestling. My first memory of watching pro wrestling was around 2002, 2003. That's kind of the first memory. The first memory I have in my head is watching Monday Night Raw and seeing the the review of Survivor Series from the night before where Shawn Michaels came back in the chamber. He wins the world title on his second run. And and that goes out saying Shawn Michaels is by far my favorite wrestler of all time, still to this day. Nice. Um, I could never – I was never like Shawn as far as athleticism goes, but just the way he tells stories, the way he – and as I got older and started to kind of understand wrestling, the way he would sell moves, his promos. And I know some people aren't really high on the later years of HBK, but – I mean, I love like peak like 96, 97 HBK, 95 HBK. Heel HBK is great. The second run he had in WWE from 02 all the way till his retirement. I love Shawn Michaels because not just the, the fact he was a great wrestler, but when he was out there, you could tell he gave everything he had. I mean, you watch some guys and you're like, well, like I love Batista, but you know, there was some stuff Batista left out there on the, on the mat. I loved watching Kevin Nash. I mean, he's just a big imposing dude, but he leaves all this stuff out on the mat. When you watch a Shawn Michaels match, good, bad, ugly, he's leaving everything out there on the on the mat for you, and he's going there for one purpose to entertain the people. No doubt. And uh, so that's one of my favorites. Um, but 02, 03 is really the, when when Shawn Michaels has that big feud with Triple H. Uh, that's probably one of the earliest memories of watching wrestling when I was in elementary school. Now, as I got older, I kind of went back and kind of fell in love with the hardcore wrestling. Really, the thing that 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 drew me to wrestling. And it sounds weird, and some people don't may not relate to this, but I loved watching two guys beat the hell out of each other, and the one guy bleeding, and he's he's selling up 
asking for help and he makes a big comeback and wins. I love that that shot is like burned into my, my brain of HBK holding the world title, blood just pouring down his face, confetti, people are laid in the ring, passed out. Like that shot's just burned into my my brain. So, I believe it. So when I think about pro wrestling, I think about uh, two guys beating the hell out of each other, bleeding and just laying their guts out there. Kind of translated over the air. It, it kind of <laughs> translated us. For sure. I mean, you're you're talking to two other Shawn Michael uh, lovers here, right? Me and Dozer both fully, fully uh, fell in love with Shawn Michaels as a young kid. Um, and I, we've said it. It might be controversial some. I'm I'm loose pants Shawn over tight pants Shawn. You know, that's what I compare the 90s era as tight pants. <laughs> To loose pants, Sean, in the 02 Well, you know, he doesn't really wear the era. tight pants, the loose pants until like 05. He's still tight pants and up. It's, it is. Two, he does wear tights for a little bit, right? In yeah, in the Elimination it. Chamber match where he wins the belt, he's got these ugly ass brown. <laughs> yeah. I remember oh, he was over. Man. He's got the Dutch boy Short hair. Cut. He cut his hair too short, so it wasn't super <laughs> yeah. long yet. It's like this weird Karen cut. And like, but I just I specifically remember me being seven, eight years old. We were over at a uh, at a, my dad's friend's house watching the pay per view, and I was the biggest Shawn Michaels fan. And they were dying laughing because when he won, I, when he won the match, I just jumped up and started dancing like Shawn Michaels, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, I'm like with the hips. I'm just like sexy boy. He <laughs> is seven, eight years old the whole time, right? And, like, they are dying laughing. And that moment is burned into my brain because my dad would bring it up over and over of, like, how much I love Shawn Michaels because of that actual match, man. When he come back and won the title, and it's the only title he won, right? world title he won in his run That's after right. that. But um, It's crazy. It's crazy, too. Cause it's crazy you bring that up. Cause I watched the Elimination Chamber this year, right? And then afterwards, I was kind of a little disappointed. I mean, it was okay, but... I looked at my dad and we watched it and I was like, let's go watch a real Elimination Chamber. We go back and watch that same one where Sean wins. I'm just like, man, those tights were ugly as hell. But that was a good ass match. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Um, yeah, Sean was, was it for me, man. And like, I've even go back and do tape study nowadays, man. And just to see the way he sells and is, is next level. You can just, the storytelling ability he had was is insane and it's so it's no wonder so many people mimic or try to uh copy Sean today. Uh um, that's right. I mean he made we millions see it all dollars. the time. Think about this too. He he made millions of dollars off of back injury in ninety eight. And he I mean er, any time from the time till he retired, any move that was done to his back, I mean you act like you think he was dying. And oh, you yeah. could see the pain on his face. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how bad it hurt, but just watched him, you're like, damn, this guy's hurt. Yeah. I mean, he he made millions of dollars off that damn back injury. Oh yeah, bro. Every time he got thrown in the corner, you know what sale was coming when he we got Irish right. into that corner <laughs> coming up on Flipped. the buckle, hey, hitting the yeah. ground. It's crazy too. I kind of see Orton heading that way too. But I seen him acting like that in Elimination Chamber. I was like, shit. Yeah, he's he really hurt. Like, chamber. what's going on right now? I was just so excited for his tag match, and it felt so bad that his his tag partner just didn't show up yeah. for him. You know. Uh, the Vince McMahon and, and, and Shane McMahon versus him and God. <laughs> it's just sad that he never made it to the ring. You know, you know? what? This uh, man deserves what he's getting right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love Jim um, Ross whenever, in that era when Vince is doing his little strut down the aisle, and he says, well, I don't know, it might have been WrestleMania 22, but he says, one day, King, this man will make, take, make a hostile takeover of hell itself. <laughs> Thank God, if that ain't a damn <laughs> heel call, I don't know what that is. What a great, what a great line by my former coworker, uh, Jim Ross. Um, don't, don't brag. Uh, life's crazy. Humble brag. <laughs> life's flex. Crazy. You know, you know, chill flex. But it is what it is. Um, I got released. <laughs> but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, Sean is is a great, and I could absolutely see how it translates over to the big time Mike career. The blood pouring, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the 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 um, the days look in your eyes, you know, as blood is pouring down your face. It, 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 that, that glazed over look, uh, it absolutely the shines through in some of your matches. <laughs> but uh, as a okay. heel, some of these people was was glad to see you bleed 
uh, as bad as you did. It's funny. It's funny the dichotomy. But like a lot of people love the podcast last week, and we were t- joking before the pod that hey, maybe you're finally getting the respect you deserved so long ago, big time. Maybe you're finally, or getting maybe they're bandwagon fans. <laughs> the, the, maybe the they're jumping theory. on. Maybe they're bandwagon fans. <laughs> maybe. Who knows at this point? What I do know though is we we slowly alluded to it last week, but I found this hidden. KBW Hardcore title match. Uh-huh. It was the Bama Kid versus AK versus Maxilla versus Big Time Mike. It will be one of the matches that goes up in the coming months. Um, again, just want to reiterate, you will get a match a month from us, never before seen. And this month's yeah. match that me and uh, Bulldozer had just been working on earlier is before we did the KBW finale, we filmed a regular triple threat match that did not involve Pac-Man. It was me versus AK, Cage versus AK versus Big Time Mike. That was going to be the finale. We filmed it. After it was done, we thought, this doesn't live up to what KBW needs to happen. We need to refilm this sure. match. And then in that, I thought, well, would it be really cool if I could get Pac-Man to come cash in the money in the bank to be a part of the match? And so... That happened, and we refilmed the match, and we had a whole different scenario. So there's a non-canon triple threat match finale that you will get this month, here in the next day or two, uh, if you are a KBW member. So I implore everyone to uh, to check this match yeah. out and to sign up at the Difference Maker tier so you can watch it. Hell yeah! I want to say that uh, you know not to not to keep hounding the membership too much, but you know. We're going back, me, AK, even Mike, uh, Fuego, seeing all these videos that we haven't uploaded. There's going to be some good stuff to be uploaded yeah. in that membership. Because like you said, you know, we got this match, the alternate match, this month. Next month, we've been hyping it up. We have the, the Royal Rumble 3 coming, right? That's going to be the big match next month. But then, AK found a whole like storyline that we did with several matches that we can upload. Like, this is going to be this is going to be amazing, guys. And uh, finally, the commentary that Mike the Dog Goodman did on that uh, Super Threat finale, some of the best ever. It's amazing. Hell yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, the, what, he, what he is saying here, guys, is that, you know, right in 2020, right during the pandemic, uh, we tried to film a new KBW storyline. We introduced some new wrestlers. We, uh, we brought back Big Time Mike as the general manager. Uh, you know, and I was unfortunately doing some stuff with uh, my pro career at the time, so I wasn't involved in a lot of these videos. But even though we didn't get to finish the storyline, there is a whole mini storyline that we are going to release in the next couple months. And remember, if you haven't signed up for the membership, we already posted one never before seen yeah. match for last month, the month of March. I mean, the month of month of February. So if you sign up today, you'll get last month's match and this month's match. If you sign up next month, mm. you'll get all the, the matches beforehand and Royal Rumble 3. But we don't get paid for any of our past videos. So this is our way of giving back to you in hopes that you give back to us. Uh, we'll also be doing a live stream very soon. And that way you can gift out memberships on the live stream to other people. So if you have a little bit of extra bucks to toss our way and want to help other people get the membership, you can gift them a $5 membership Uh so that way they can get the podcast early every week, and then maybe they want to upgrade to them to the difference maker tier to watch the matches. Mm-hmm. We will see what we can do. But I'm telling you, you're gonna to want to watch this Royal Rumble three. You're gonna to want to watch this triple threat match, non canon ending that we almost had, the alternate ending to KBW. A lot of fun stuff in the works behind the scenes. But this is the free for everyone content right here, the KBW podcast that gets uploaded every Tuesday, and we have none other than one of the most anticipated guests. Of all time in big time, Mike. Uh, big time, like I said, you've been listening to the podcast week after week. Um, do you have a favorite moment, a favorite highlight, anything that we've been talking about that has piqued your interest that didn't involve you that you want to get off your chest, or are you a uh, are you a little bit uh, self indulging, egotistical asshole like myself who really only cares about <laughs> what I do, you know, not compared about what everybody else does. Well, I mean, I think there's there's a lot of things that I did and I enjoyed. Um, I'm telling you one thing that I wish that, and you know, we always talk about the hypothetical, right? If if 
you never go to college if we all stay in Alabama and film. I, I, I'm going to live, I'm going to die on this hill. I'm telling you, I think the, will be like our authority storyline with Pitbull and Great Dane and myself. I, and I, this may sound egotistical. I think that's a main event storyline in the making. Oh, Just yeah. the, the rivalry between Great Dane, Pitbull, and myself. It's oh, two no, on no. one because you set yourself up for so many different things. Um, uh, Pete, uh, the PJ, main event scene as a whole. Pitbull. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you yes. off. I'm sorry to cut you off. But the main event scene as a whole, we've no, harped on this multiple podcasts. It would have been so large, right? Like I said, Pac Man, Cage, AK, Bulldozer, Paul Wall, Pitbull, Big Time Mike. You can sprinkle in a D-man here and there. You know what I'm saying? You can sprinkle in other guys. But, like, even just those eight names itself, you can do so much mix and match and have great matches. Even Bama Kid, to a certain extent, you know, had hit that big-time level, no pun intended, uh, where they could all be main eventers. And, like, that's what we really didn't get to see. Like, these newer guys that had just showed up on the scene, like a pit bull, like a big-time Mike, in their prime, getting week to week storylines, promos, matches. That's what would have just kicked off. And I definitely think easily you and Pitbull could have been a world title match anywhere. In uh compared to any of the KBW world title matches, it would have been great. Absolutely. And I think too, with especially with that group of people. I mean, because you, if you, let's say you take that group, you set yourself up to where you have Let's just say, let's say you take the last season, right? With we we have the we don't have the finale. I have the belt. Now, you set yourself up where you have you can essentially have what everybody wants: the rise of the Bama kid. He goes through all these different these phases. He beats Pitbull. He beats Great Dane. He beats Bulldozer. He beats Big Time Mike. Wins the world title. And then not only do you pay off years of this guy just getting his damn ass whipped just for the sake of getting his ass whipped. Now you build you have a legitimate baby face that people love and adore. And now he's the world champ. I mean, I think, and that didn't even involve me just besides lose, right? Yeah. But I think that it creates a whole different, there's a whole other can of biscuits you can open up with that, man. I agree. And, you know, and I, I, I know K says it a lot. Uh, he didn't want to be too greedy. He didn't want to be too selfish because that was him. But I, I look at Mama Kid, not as Cage. I look at him as a whole. Totally a whole per- His mannerisms are totally yeah. different from yeah. Cage. And so, and he was so hyped. It's like you said, he could have went on this phenomenal run that people would have just loved. And again, I know Cage is sitting there like, well, I didn't want to give myself another run, but people didn't know. You know, people would have known, and it would have been amazing. Uh, and, you know, and that, this is just another way to look at it, too. I just Big Time has such a wrestling mind, and again, we didn't have a lot of wrestling minds backstage. He could have easily helped us book a lot of this yeah. out. You know, he comes up mm-hmm. with promos and things of that nature, and we could have really played off of some of this, you know. And it's just a shitty situation. That's why everyone needs to go sign up for the KBW mm-hmm. membership so we can do a big KBW reunion show and plan a bunch hey, of Hey, look, everybody got their tax right refund. It's 20 bucks a month. <laughs> All you got to do is drop 20 bucks. You already got your refund. Don't act like you didn't. You, you can afford 20 bucks a month. Come on, man. <laughs> Help us out. We're trying to get this ring yeah. so we can put on a KBW Super just, Show uh, reunion, delete, bro. Just, Come on. What y'all doing? Some of those streaming servers you don't really use that much. You know, you, you're just paying for in the background. Mm-hmm. You don't even use Netflix. What do you need Netflix for? What you need? What you need? HBO and Stars and Max, all that stuff, man. You know, oh, we doing pretty good now. Come on, cancel a couple of those OnlyFans subscriptions and come help us out over here. Yeah, yeah. Stop cancel. sending John Cena <laughs> money and cancel, help us out. Cancel that Pac-Man on Jesus. OnlyFans uh, account because yeah, he, he's, he's selling feet pics over there. <laughs> he still selling feet pics, one of the greatest KBW podcast clips of all time. Um, yeah, man, there's so many different ways we could take this podcast, you know. Uh, it's just fun. I'm, I'm so giddy to have... Uh, Big time Mike join us as like just a mainstay of this podcast as much as he can be. I know he's still got, you know, school work, uh, family obligations, for, but as much as he can be, it's going to be a pleasure having him be a part of this. I just want to read out a couple of these comments on the KBW podcast from last week. Big time Mike, a legend of the game. Great to see you doing well. Uh, Listening to this makes my heart melt. All of the my faves from KBW and One Vid. I've been waiting for you guys to talk to Mike and talk about the crossover stuff. Overall, best episode by far, right? Hey, my boy, big time Mike. Great to see one of my favorite guys doing well after all of these years. 
Big Time Mike went back and looked at all of his old stuff last week. He was gold, man. Let's go. Best wrestling pod in the game, KBW, you know. There's a bunch of fun stuff here, right? Uh, that we can easily build upon this podcast with us for. Because you can just... I feed off of Big Time Mike's passion. I fed off of it back when we were wrestling for the KBW finale stuff. And I feed off of it during this podcast. You can just feel the energy in the room go up when he's on the pod. Would you agree? Oh, okay? for sure. I love the energy. I love what Big Time Mike brings to the pod. He... uh he just brings even more um, more stories that we haven't even touched on yet. You know, like he, he has so many uh, great stories that uh, he remembers that some of us don't remember. And all of the uh, the car rides to North Carolina, to Pennsylvania, uh, all the crossover stuff he has in the chamber, and also the stuff we did at KBW. You know, without you know Fuego being there, and we did we did a few vids trying to bring KBW back. We got some vids from that. You know, it's just it's just been awesome to have him here and just talk about everything, everything you know we've been talking about so far in KBW and and so forth. I love it, man. Just keep him coming. Agree. Like I told you, I'm um, excited to be on, man. It's this this is a this is something as a, again I just consume. As I said during that time in my life, I was a, a I, I was a I hate use this word lightly. I was a whore for professional wrestling. I consumed. <laughs> everything i could on tv i watched i mean i watched new japan i watched ring of honor i watched impact i watched wwe i listened to wrestling podcasts not just like your main like your steve austin show and chris jericho i listened to you know the good brothers and the colt cabana show i mean i was, I was consuming wrestling because i loved it so much and and the i think the passion just naturally comes out when you love something the passion just naturally comes out and it can be good and bad because i think some people especially like in the line of work. I mean, I'm a teacher. Sometimes passion comes off as aggression. Uh, there's a quote that, that's thrown out there that passion comes off as aggression to the unmotivated. Well, when you're in a room with people that are like-minded, they see, well, hell, this guy just really loves what he does. Mm -hmm. He's just not being an asshole, right? And so there's a, there, there's a lot of stuff, man, that, that I think if you're just a fan, you don't really understand how much someone really loves it. Because I think as a fan, you can have a love for it. But until you've actually tasted, until you've taken a bump, and I didn't have a professional career, but I did, I did bump around the ring a little bit. Until you actually like take that first bump, you either love it or you hate it. And I guess the pros in here can actually talk about it. When you take that first bump, you either love it or you hate it. And I loved it. And I, it's one of the biggest regrets that I have in my life is that I never actually pursued that dream to be a professional wrestler. Because for a long time, I mean, there was two things I wanted to be when I was when I when I was about seven years old. They you'd ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would say. I want to be a wrestler. Well, that's not real. What else do you want to do? I want to be a football coach. And I do I do one of those right now. And so um, to, to be able to sit here and live this dream out through a podcast, hell, I mean, you don't have to pay me anything. As long as I'm here with you guys, I'm I'm good with it. So. Yeah, yeah. And he ain't even 30 yet, so there's plenty of time to make this dream a reality. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's Just right. give me some time. Give me some time to do my magic, ladies and gentlemen. Give me some time. I'm going to get Bulldozer in a ring as well before I'm, before it's all said and done. So, uh, those, I did want to ask you this, right? We've been talking about all these crossovers and stuff, and you never got to do them. But if you mm -hmm. did, you know, I feel like the more mature we got, the better we got. Is there anything about your character you would have changed or your moveset that you thought you would have changed or done differently looking back at it now? Um, no, I, um, you know, I, I would like to have, I feel like we were on a pace, right? Like, like more and more, I, I was willing to try to do more and more and get more comfortable with stuff. And you see it, and you know, as I jump out of the ring, as I do the package pile driver, uh, stuff like that. And I just think, had I kept going, you know, I just would have been uh, just open to doing more and more stuff. And who knows? I just know, I mean, even now, but I know if I had done more, Comparing that first bulldozer match to the last bulldozer match is kind of completely different, you know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the growth was just exponential. I really wish we could have got you on a crossover event. I, uh, yeah. I, 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 it was some not only just because the matches and stuff were fun, but because it would have been fun to do a road trip. I've never done a proper road trip yeah. with you, ever. I mean, you yeah, and AK have got to drive places together. Pretty. You and AK have been to concerts mm -hmm. together and stayed like. The closest thing I got is when we stayed at the beach together for that spring break year, uh, hmm. which is still one of the craziest yeah. 
more memories from my high school days. <laughs> we have a whole um, podcast about that shit. <laughs> oh my god. And About Great Dane knocking this guy out. <laughs> Hopefully so. Oh Great Dane knocks oh, a guy we... out. Fireman hits another guy over the head with a bottle and knocks him out. Okay. Okay. That's just that's just Pit condo story. We have to save. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh yeah. We gotta save this. We gotta save this. This this <laughs> podcast. That could be it's a whole not, podcast. I mean, Great Dane. I mean, you say knocked out. I mean, it's possible he killed a man. <laughs> he didn't kill it. I'm gonna say, I'm but gonna it say seemed it. like it. I'll say this guy. He didn't show up to Great school Dane. for like two weeks. Great Dane, but that can actually whoop ass in real life. Dude's a black belt in Taekwondo, but, that, but that ain't even the Taekwondo that he'll whoop your ass at. He'll just knock you, just hell knock out. you out. Yeah, yeah bro. He has, he has like unfathomable like strength. Like his like his whole like knuckle like is probably bigger than my whole face. To be honest, that's a, he is. His hands are like damn trash can lids. They're gigantic. Yes. No, that's a, that's a hell of a damn uh, damn story. That sounds like a crossover story. When we, yes. when when myself, uh, Fuego and AK went up to uh, Pennsylvania for the WrestleCon taping, and they all remember this. I rented a car and we drove to Drew Hood's house in Cary, North Carolina. Got in the car with him and yep. drove to Altoona, Pennsylvania, which was another six hours. But on the way back. We stopped at Drew's house on the way back to watch The Walking Dead. They had a new uh, episode yes. that came out. And we didn't sleep. So I drove straight from, from Cary to Alabama and we finally switched out in Alabama. But well, I don't know if I don't know if Fuego and AK remember this, but the, that, that long drive when you're going from Carolina to South Carolina to Georgia, the drive when you enter the state of Georgia to Atlanta is about an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. And I remember stopping at a gas station. This is like two o'clock in the morning. Stop at a gas station to get a Red Bull. I shotgun the Red Bull, and I'm driving, and they're both asleep. And the next thing I know, I woke up. We were in five, and this is not a lie. I'm not. It's a, I, if I'm lying, I'm dying. Well, I woke up in 5:30 a.m. traffic, about to rear in the bus, and I slam on the brakes. And they get up, and they're like, "Huh? What's going on?" I'm good. They lay back down and go to sleep. So I'm fighting in in morning traffic in Atlanta to stay awake, and they're like, "What in the hell is going on?" So by the time we get out of Atlanta, I'm, I mean, I ain't slept in two days. Hey, it's KJ bro, or Boy goes like, hey, look, you, to be, you gotta jump on the wheel with me. I, and he had rented yes. a car, and I get when you rent a car for the first time that young, you don't want to let anybody else drive it because if it, if they wreck it or anything, it's all on you, right? But my boy no. was, he was over there just, I was just like, you know, yeah. swear, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm like, no, you're not good, Mike. And it, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, kill us. It's kind of you Mike, guys. Like, bro, bro, you never I go promise. sleep on a man. Huh? I he told us we were good to take a nap because I thought we would switch out, right? So it's like he Mike is a a, a great riding buddy. I'm just like, hey, I throw on a podcast, I'll be all good. Y'all good to get y'all some rest if y'all need some rest. I was like, and I and I sat up front and I kept saying that. Are you good, Mike? You good if I take a little if I yeah. doze off? Yeah, you good, you're good. He kept saying this. And like I said, around eight or nine that next morning, I was like, "Mike, give me the wheel. You got to pull over. Got to pull over." And I eventually got him to switch with and me. When I got and... in the back seat, I, I'm talking. About I was on. I, I didn't. I didn't wake up till we arrived at Mister. Oh Oswald. yeah, he was gone. Trading He's out, out of there. That was rough. That was rough. Because I'm usually a great asleep. riding buddy. I we could have drove all the way to oh, Las Vegas and he'll still be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He would have never, never known. He just woke up in Vegas like, damn. What happened, boys? <laughs> what happened? Where'd he it go? It was a good trip, though. But it was a I good do, trip. I that was crazy. I could have. Go ahead. Bro. Yeah, that was a hell of a trip. Oh, I was just going to say, I do wish I could have uh, went on those trips and, and partake. Yeah, it's crazy. We've never been on a road trip together, but we always have an uh, amazing time when we do hang out together. Um, mm -hmm. But I will say this. If I had anybody I could have faced in the crossover stuff, uh, it would have been either Myron Reed because I just he just pissed me off with his promos. You know, he was <laughs> he was a good shit talker and I was like, man, the Bulldogs would just wreck him. Or Drew Hood, because it's like ever since um, you know, I've never met Drew Hood personally, but ever since you guys have been in contact with him, he's friended me on on Facebook and I've just been following him and he just seems like a genuine great guy and I just great would love dude. to have uh, worked with him. Great dude. A plus dude. Yeah. A plus guy, all those guys are good dudes. A plus guy. Drew was at my at my at my wedding. Cam Jackson, great guys at my yeah. wedding. 
Sorry. I put a picture up on the podcast of us. I put a picture up on the podcast of me, AK, Big Time, Drew, and Cam on the podcast last week uh, at at Big Time's wedding where Big Time is, you know, feeling himself. Got a uh, a little inebriated. Feeling real good. Yeah. Ready to drop an elbow if necessary. Uh, Oh, I would. Which I guess we might as well. we might as well tell oh, yeah. the story on this trip, right? So, so I drive, I drive from Oklahoma to um, to Alabama, but to get out of my work because I worked at the trampoline park at the time, I went to my job and I and I just started there. It was only like a few months in, and I was like, I was like. Uh, I put on my best acting job ever, and this sounds so bad. My dad wasn't married to anybody at the time, <laughs> but I go in I remember this, uh, to the I remember office this. and talk to my boss, and I break down in tears saying that my stepmom had gotten into a car accident <laughs> and that I needed to miss work this weekend. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like 22, 23 at the time, maybe. <laughs> I didn't have a stepmom. I remember that. I just made up a lie. I didn't have a stepmom. <laughs> well, I was like breaking down in tears. Horrible, <laughs> horrible situation. I've never done that. But looking back on the gump, the gall I had to do that at the time makes me chuckle. Yo, boss, when Chevy Park watch this right now, like, what that little motherfucker? <laughs> no, like, bro. Three days, <laughs> three days later, like, four, I... I get back to town and we have like a big, like just an employee meeting, like a regular once a month employee meeting. And everybody, every employee there signed a card and gave it to me. (laughs) I just started the job and I had no way to get out of it, but I needed to go to to the Pennsylvania to wrestle for this cross up. So I come up with this. Crazy lie, which is ridiculous. Nobody investigate just to just look you so, up to see like your any pictures or your stuff. No, nobody. Nobody. No. Nobody. And so like, well, because we didn't post any I pictures went, on Facebook either that weekend. I'm pretty sure we didn't post I any went pictures to, at all. Well, I didn't. I made sure not to friend any of my coworkers yeah. and stuff. I hadn't made manager at the time, but I'd worked my way to manager like three months after that. Um, but I drove to. I drove to uh, Bama, met up with y'all, and that's the first time I've seen Mike since graduation, really, and talked to him. And, like, there was a lot of stuff that happened in my personal life that Mike didn't know or heard secondhand information. So I remember me and him really chatted about my personal life on that trip. We really got to know each other. We got that to was a hell talk of a about that was a really, that was one. That's why I mean, like, that soul-healing conversation. Those trips were, mm-hmm. were talking about healing the soul, man. Those were, those were good, good talks, man. Great talks. Then we finally get to North Carolina, meet up with Drew and Cam, and we and and Big Time jumps up in the front seat. Me and Zach and AK packed in the back seat like sardines. It was like a Jeep at the time. And like we all fell asleep through DC, oh, yeah. through Maryland, through all of that. We were asleep. We didn't wake up until we were nearly in Pennsylvania. And I hadn't seen mountains and stuff like that in all my life, living where I was at. And it was just like crazy to wake up into that because our tuna is in the middle of this giant canyon, it seems oh, yeah. like. It's like a giant you know? bowl, man. You drive in, it's like a big ass yeah. bowl. <laughs> it's pretty cool though. I remember it. It was a pretty, pretty dope spot. Yeah, and so like and so and that was like the first time I got to see crossover Mike in action. Not even wrestling. I'm talking about the late mm-hmm. nights, bro. So we <laughs> get to this hotel room in Altoona, Pennsylvania. And him and Cam are all, you know, uh, fired up and they're uh they're doing different things and like uh and like Cam would do this thing where he would like just spike himself for no reason. So like he would spike himself in the middle of whatever uh fast food establishment oh, yeah. we're in. And Big Time would just raise his voice out of nowhere and just be like, Big Time, baby. Like just yelling back and forth, right? Then we go we go to IHOP on the last night after we had filmed everything. We come back to the hotel room and Big Time just goes into promo mode for like four oh, hours yeah. straight, bro. And like we play off of him sometimes, oh, and then it gets tiring, yeah. and then it gets funny yes. again, and then it gets tiring, and then it gets funny again. And people are trying to sleep lights is out, and he just like, bells will be ringing, big time, we'll be drinking, you know, all of this yes. shit, you know, he's just going nuts. And so like, I get sick of it at first, but then I join in, mm-hmm. right? 
And he's like, uh, he's and like they're talking about John three sixteen, like Stone Coast out there's the hotel Bible that we pull out, <laughs> right? And we're to cut yeah. promos like that. And then like at one point I literally put it on the bed and I jump and do a moonsault. Oh on the moonsault Bible. Bible. I moonsaulted the Bible <laughs> that night. I thought for sure we were gonna get to think... get the police called on us, but guess nobody gave a fuck about the little uh, <laughs> motel that we were in enough to call for. A, a this chip. wasn't the, the night, but it was another night. It was at uh, I think it was Cam's house. No, it was at Aaron's house, someone's house. But uh, I think you you remember big time was one of the, like the last uh, nights we had. It was Aaron's house. It was that last yeah. trip that it we was all three house. went. Him and Cam yes. were living together. At the I time. was in the shower and I come out of the shower and he's going I bananas. Want to say I still had room. that video somewhere. I remember videoing. I remember remember videoing him like doing it. Oh, uh, that's that's magic video. Yes, uh, I I want to say I still have the worst seen. part about it is it might be on your Snapchat. The again, worst part about friend. it is there there's a there's a kid there's a guy that wrestled with us. His name was Chase Bridges. Super yes. nice dude, loved wrestling. He was with us, and the whole time I was cutting these promos, and I'm well past like drunk is not even the, a, the word I would use to describe me. I'm well <laughs> past that, and he's like sitting down on the floor, and we're watching. I think the reunion rumble, yeah. and I'm cutting promos about whipping people's ass, and there's spit just flying out of my mouth, and I think I drenched him in spit, and he didn't even say a damn word. He's just taking it like sitting there laughing. I'm spitting all over him. I said. God, I'm so. Uh, next day, I went up to him. I said, "Man, I'm so sorry." Yeah. I said, "You didn't sign up to get spit on by Big Time Mike." <laughs> sorry. It's all good. Navon McDonald didn't get uh, plan on getting his ass whooped in Uno either, but you know, I had to do what I had to do that weekend. Um, That's right. And but no, like the like I said, these crossover events were just just such a bonding experience, yeah. and that's why I hate that Bozer Dozer didn't get to be a part of some of these. And it's so weird how it's come full circle now where he like, likes wrestling again, which I get it. It's it's kind of uh, in vogue now to like wrestling again. But it's like I remember when AK fell out of love with wrestling, right? He trained to be a pro, and then he kind of, after he stopped wrestling, he kind of just stopped watching yeah. it. He got felt, didn't like it anymore. And I remember AEW and me being in AEW slowly brought him back to watching professional wrestling and keeping up with it. And it felt like I got my best friend back in this weird way. Like there was a thing that we were bonded over that he kind of just drifted away from that we didn't have to talk about and to get excited about anymore. Like we do that with music. We do that with TV shows. We do that with podcasts and stuff. But like wrestling was one of those major, uh, you know, connecting points for us. And so to have him come back I, and, and to tr- go get training again, it felt like I got my friend back. And now it feels like in the past six, seven, eight months, the same thing with Dozer. I was like, mm-hmm. oh my God, I got Dozer back too. And it's like reconnecting us in a way that, you know, I hadn't really been connected with you with in and out of little conversations and stuff in the past 10 years, you know. It felt like we just drifted in and out of friendship. Not in a bad way, but just that's how life goes. But like now, to have this podcast, to get back together with y'all each week, it's built that. And even in just my second week talking with Mike, I feel the same way. It's just like, oh, snap. The friendship is building again in a great way. It makes me excited. It's like I said. It's like I said before, bro. Um, if we didn't, if we didn't make a dime off this podcast, if we didn't have a one viewer on every episode, I would still love to do it just because it's an excuse for us to get together and talk. Because everybody knows how busy it is when you become an adult, how hard it is to get together with your friends and do stuff. And this is just a reason to get together and be able to talk to each other. That's right, hundred percent. Exactly. It's like some people get to go into the bar on a Friday night, spend a bunch of money, get wasted, and that's how they try to keep up with each other. But the older you get, the harder that is. This is a great excuse, and we can, and that's why I edited it. Like I said, I stopped doing my other wrestling podcast just because it felt like a, a job and it wasn't fun as much anymore. And this feels fun. Like I will gladly edit this when I have the time because I like to hang out with y'all. No doubt. I think we got a couple more questions here. Um, Let me pull them up. I do want to tell a funny story while he's pulling that up. Uh, Oh, yes, please. Comments on the the last pod uh, talking about Mike, you know, saying he's aged and, and, you know, he he looks different and whatnot. And uh, so... 
back to the kind of the 2020 um, videos we recorded and we're trying to bring KBW back. I I hadn't seen Mike since God high school maybe or mm -hmm. or maybe last time we did KBW before that. Uh, so I I didn't know and and take off your hat, Mike, if you don't mind. This man's fully gray headed. Can't see this man's fully gray headed. And I looked at him and I said, "What the hell happened to your hair?" Well, he looks at me, and for those of you that don't know, what those is bald. He said, "What the hell happened to yours?" And I said, <laughs> "Fair enough." <laughs> Touche. Touche indeed. That's life, baby. Get a little older, do a little thing. It's, uh, rice cooker asks you big time. What is your favorite food? <laughs> Ooh, that's a that's a tough one. I, look, I'm gonna be. Did you say rice? No, God, not rice. Definitely not rice. Look, I have to be. I have to be like stereotypical. My favorite food of all time. If if I had one last meal, would be a cheeseburger, <laughs> hands down. Cheeseburger, fries, and a from coat. where though? Ooh. Mm. I mean, Whataburger's got a Ooh. good hamburger. Don't get me wrong. Ooh, AK, 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 Whataburger. Look, I know. If you're going to have a hamburger, if you're going to have a good hamburger, and this might be a, a hot take, if you're going to have a good hamburger, spend some good money on it. Go to Five Guys, get you a, a good cheeseburger, <laughs> add some bacon on there, and A1 and mayo. I'm talking about slap your mama good son. You want to go bankroll? Let's go to Five Guys. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was about to say the same thing. That's expensive as hell. And I'll say this: it's I've never had In and Out, so I can't speak on In and Out. That's good, but it's not as good as Water Burger. Listen, water, dog. Water here's the deal. Look, for here's you, the deal. Here's the deal with In and Out. You just said the key word. You said I add bacon and a one, right? At In and Out, you can't add bacon to a burger, and that's my go-to is adding bacon to a burger. Mm. And so, if you can't add bacon to a burger In and Out, it immediately disqualifies it from the best burger discussions. Does that make sense to you? You can't. So you're telling me you can't add bacon for extra charge on the side? They don't have bacon at all anywhere. They don't have bacon in, in the vicinity. That's, that's un-American. That's absolutely un -American. In, in and out is very, very. It's absolutely that's un -American. satanic. What are we doing? In that's and out? satanic. To what be in the hell are we doing? In and out is very like they want you to stick to their menu. They got like five oh, things. They got, menu. they got like five things, and they're like, pick one of these. Is it <laughs> bacon? Mighty. That's well, what hey, I, I said. Think where else is How you call good? yourself a burger, burger joint with no bacon? That's right. Your damn burger hey. joint, your damn family dollars, what you are. Shake Shack has got a fucking fantastic burger. A lot of these places they I didn't do. discover until I went out west traveling, yeah. but man. Shake Shack. We got a lot of Shake Shacks up here, yeah. Shake Shack's good. But I would say, like, I know we, we talk about a lot of, like, restaurants and stuff, but for me, man, nothing beats just a homemade, like, actual burger. Like, you actually put it on the grill That's and make right. it yourself and, like, you know. Oh, charcoal really, burger. Yeah, man, like. I don't know. Man. There's something about it. It's an actual homemade burger. This hits different sometimes. Depends on who makes it, bro. Some of these people burn yeah. burgers and don't get the uh, right uh, patty. Well, they ain't got it. Well, you know, the old Gordon Ramsay quit pressing the juice out of it, man. Some people press <laughs> the damn saying, moisture and juice out of it. Fucking raw. <laughs> I'm just saying, my girl. It's damn. It's like boot. It's like eating a damn leather boot, man. My girl made some great burgers, and my girlfriend now makes great, great homemade burgers. So I would live in a dream over there, to be honest. Mm. Oh, no, just chill flex. Love, I get you. Home okay, humble brag. brag. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, at least your damn wife cooks. <laughs> well, she has fired across the mouth. <laughs> she don't watch this. Oh, she don't watch this. I love you, honey. I <laughs> love you, honey. Uh, I mean, we might as well go around the table now. What is everyone's favorite food? Dozer, do you have a... Oh, I think I... Oh. Last, meal. Last meal couldn't eat anything else. Well, you know, that's a little different. It's not different. It is. It is. If we're going with just basic favorite food, it would probably be either pizza or sushi. Oh, but if we're going last meal, I always said I'd want some of my grandmama's cornbread, oh. some of my ain't knee knee sweet tea, <laughs> some of my mama's fried pork chops and big beans. But that's too country for probably a lot of these folks. Oh, man. Sweet that bread. sounds like, good. I, I like that. Like, last meal is different because I would want to mix and match. I would want a water burger cinnamon roll if it's my last yeah. meal ever because that shit just hits differently, right? Like, there's certain things I would mix and match if it was my last meal compared to my favorite food. Um, AK, what about you? What's your favorite food? I was thinking about it. I think, uh, man, I want to say it's either lasagna 
because I really love lasagna or like a chicken parm. Like I always get chicken parmesan every time they're at, at like mm-hmm. restaurants and stuff. There's something about like a good chicken parm that I really love. And also beans and rice. I, I love any type of beans and rice. Of course, you know, red beans and rice, black eyed peas, you know, southern stuff like that. But cornbread, like Dustin was saying. But I'll say lasagna yeah. and chicken parm is kind of like neck and neck for me right now. But I use I just my go tos when I go to like restaurants and stuff. Hell yeah. I, um, you know, over the years I've changed. Like when I was a younger kid, I fried chicken was my, my thing. You know, I, I, give me a, 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 a chicken leg, man. You give me a chicken leg and I would just chomp down on it. Then I got a little older and I fell in love with tacos, right? And just my mom would make these tacos that I just would devour, man. I would eat like seven, eight at a time. Mm. She thought it was something wrong with me. I would just go nuts with these tacos. <laughs> Shut- you know, corn dogs had my heart for a minute. I was just a corn dog yeah. guy for a little bit of time. Uh, shout out to the Indian taco. That would be my favorite food. I just don't have it enough. You know? <laughs> I- well, see, mm. that then that leads me to my final favorite, right? What To this day, if you ask me, hey, what do you want to eat? Favorite food all it's got to be crawfish. Oh, yes. Bro. Crawfish. Good, it's nice, is a Cajun, one, yeah. spicy crawfish is my favorite food. Hey, what's the, and again, what's I don't the best know. side that goes in the bowl? What's the best side that goes in the bowl? The potato, the corn, mm. the sausage? Like what, what's Lemons, the best side? bro. It, it, Lemons. It yeah. adds a, no. a flavor uh, to I it. I said corn. Lemon and corn. onion. I'm about to eat, You though. get some lemon and oh, oh, to eat, to eat. Sausage and corn oh, yeah. is it's, the go-to. Potatoes are okay. I'm talking to make the juice... Delicious. Yeah. You put the lemons in there. I don't eat the lemon afterwards. No, it's but. definitely going to be the corn if it's cooked good enough. Yeah, I mean, the potato and red potatoes hold it. Exactly. But it depends, though. You got some people that don't know how to season and cook the potatoes. But if there's if a good, good potato, the potatoes. Yes, 100%. Oh, yeah. Those red potatoes. Well, it just depends on how good the crawfish is, too. It's like, if you know it's been boiled properly with the right seasonings, you know, or with the right, you know, in the right uh, boil, right? The right mixture of, you know, then anything that you that you put in there with it is gonna taste good. Potatoes, corn, like That's you right. just gotta make sure your mixture is good, your ratio of everything is good with the crawfish boil. But I mean that Cajun style. I, even to this day, like I get these like uh these protein meals from Walmart, and I would just douse them in either Tony seasoning or some type of. Cajun Louisiana mm-hmm. seasoning and just make it spicy like just for me. <laughs> Come on, dog. And so it's like crawfish is is my like, favorite food. Uh, without this ain't really, I would say, a, like a food. Like you wouldn't eat it to like you know to get full, but a sneaky thing, like a sneaky. I guess snack. I guess you call it a snack that I love. So I think it's mostly a southern thing, but bowl peanuts. This is. I love it, bro. I love bowl peanuts. He does mm. love a good bowl peanuts. That's just my shit. I always go to gas stations and get some bowl peanuts. I even got go to Walmart now and get like the can and like put it in the crock pot here and make my own. It's just so, it's just so good. I, I just can't. Ooh, what is your go to gas station mm. food? Like if you had to, if you hey, we're going on a road trip. I need to get some stuff to take with me in the car. What are you picking up at a gas station? I always my go to always is I usually get the chocolate donuts. That's a little like chocolate donut they have. I really love those. Um, fast break, of course. Always I get a fast break in there. I was about to say Reese's mm-hmm. fast break is on fast my break. list. Dog. Yeah. Those mm-hmm. are good. Mm-hmm. I love the damn the Reese's, not the the, the long king size, but the Reese's big cups, the two big cups. And a mm-hmm. Dr. Pepper and then like an energy drink to wash all that down with. <laughs> Son, you talking about good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely going to energy drink. I'm definitely going to Re- Big Reese's Fast Break King Size, of course. I got to have something sour. Mm. So some days it's like some uh, g- some sour gummy worms. Some days it's some Sour Patch Kids. Some days it's some uh, Nerd Gummy Clusters, bro. That shit slaps. Um, that sounds like a, sounds like and a then, like I said, uh, title. <laughs> and then of course some type of energy Nerd drink or some type of like coke zero to like wash it all down with for sure uh but that's like the go-to and then like i said it depends on how what kind of health kick or diet i'm on because i'll also get some protein heavy stuff at the protein heavy aisle as well Hell yeah dut Oh man, you already got me out here sounding like a fat ass. Going like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you kind of. 
trying to see him. Bro, you I don't sound like the beast. The... Come on, dog. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my God. That's <laughs> <laughs> just fire. She's never coming over. <laughs> I love you, Beast. I just do that to Pop Dozer. I just did that to Pop Dozer. You're not he just canceled his, his <laughs> membership. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you seen you seen what I get though for go when we went to when I went and watched the match like a couple weeks ago. Fast break, gotta have a Reese's, some form of Reese's, but yeah. a fast break's always great. And I just love the like the Starbucks coffees, uh the cold coffees that, that are in there. That's true of my go to. There's one thing I just I uh, the, the ones in the can, the double espresso, mm -hmm. oh they're good. That's one thing I just remember that I always get as well as junior mints. That's my shit as well. I love junior mints. And then, like, if it's a long night ride, I got to have some sunflower seeds to keep me awake. So, shout out to, you know, the cracked pepper or the salt and pepper su Junior sunflower Mets. seeds. Always on deck. <laughs> the Real Mr. McClappin 27 says, question for y'all. In season wow. four, you guys did the big time talk show where Mike ripped into the locker room and even EAW was there. Any plans to make this a full time talk show, or was it just a way to get Mike more screen time? Do you remember E A W that you ripped into? These redneck looking mofo's in like Eastern oh, Alabama. Oh yeah, the, oh, oh god, the <laughs> East Arkansas wrestling. That's oh, East them. Arkansas. Right? I remember what I called them, but it was to some the tune of like these hillbilly inbred bastards because they shot a yes. video. On, and I don't know, they may be great people. They shot a video calling out, room, and it looked like. A, Something off the hills have eyes. Oh like God. something about Mike, you're trash, whatever, get a new gimmick. And so I ripped them. But it wasn't the only KBW talk show I ripped them on. I think I ripped them because they commented on all my videos about how terrible it was. So I was like, I'm going to make you famous, buddy. So everyone I post <laughs> on my damn. channel, I started off by ripping them. I, I, I As the talk show got on, I started giving out the Big Time Loser of the Week award to somebody so I would bury somebody on the talk show. I didn't get to do that on the KBW one, mm -hmm. but I always had the Big Time Loser of the Week, and I think they made the cut four or five times. I always hate it talking about any other promotion, really, because I'm just like, Lions don't concern themselves with the opinion of sheep. You know Man, what I'm saying? That's right. But Mike just Mike was looking for someone to talk shit on any day of the week. So it was like it was open season for Mike. Uh, but I was like, like you know, focus on that energy on the roster. Pitch. <laughs> if you're gonna lob it up for him, you're gonna knock it out of park. That's right. You're gonna lob it uh, up. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, but that's the thing. It's like on the KBW talk show, he got to do maybe three episodes, if that. You know, we knew we were gonna fire AK as after the, he took over the Renegades as the talk show host. We wanted it big time to do it, but like I said, we just stopped filming on a regular basis. There would have been much more KBW talk shows with big time. I also was really trying to get Mister O to come make a on screen in ring oh, yeah. appearance. I wanted him to confront big time. That's the I one I wish we could have done. Shot. Man, oh, I yeah. wish we could have done that. that would awesome. Yeah. I the definitely thing, wanted him I, to The eat first a time I ever met Mr. O, he walked right by me. He didn't know who the hell I was. <laughs> I met him at our uh, our little senior awards night. And I said, Oh, yeah. Uh, I walked by because he's looking for you. And I said, Hey, how are you? I'm big time Mike Miles. And he walked right by me. Boom, <laughs> kept on walking. I said, Well, there it goes. That's my shot. <laughs> no, he didn't I'm see fine. you. He didn't see you. He, he didn't, didn't see me. He, he was, was looking for you. It was on our senior awards yeah, he night. He was so focused yeah. on me. He yeah, was he looking for you. He didn't. Yeah. That's funny. Um, We've kind of answered this on a podcast before. Uh, did y'all get any attention whatsoever at school or your jobs due to KBW? Dozer's already talked about how he would bring it up at the right times or like during school projects and stuff, you know. Uh, and I'm the same way. Like I, I brought it up at like certain specific times about anytime someone asks me how I get started in wrestling, I always say, well, KBW, like I never would have done wrestling if KBW didn't, you know, convince me I could make, maybe do this professionally. Uh, and then over the years, you know, it was be a fun way to, it's a fun conversation started. Hey, tell me something interesting about yourself. Well, I got all these views on YouTube, right. you know. Uh, what about you, Mike? Have you ever, you know, brought that up around anybody or just to pop the boys or anything of that nature? Yeah, so uh, when I was, when we graduated high school and I went to college, you know, every, when you start college, you take your public speaking class. Well, public speaking to me was just promo class. So wherever the, the whatever the speech was, I just turned it into a promo. Yeah. I'll never forget the first uh, Spring Hill College, the first the introduction promo I did. Uh, it was basically just a welcome to to whatever speech one hundred and one 
big time Mike and I dropped an elbow. It was the, 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 the argument of the speech was, is wrestling real or is it real? Like R E A L versus R E E L like a movie reel. And I dropped an elbow mm. in the middle of the class and the whole, boom, the whole class jumps up. The teacher don't know what the hell's going on. Um, but, no, I mean, I used it in, in my damn, uh, in any presentation I did in school. And I mean, now as like a, as a football coach and a teacher, I mean, that's just, that's just what I do. I talk for a living now. And so I brought it up several times. I mean, my coworkers call me big time. Uh, Pip and CJ call me big time. So, and people yeah, don't yeah. really know where it comes from. And the only reason they know is because they were teachers at the school where we graduated from. And so they knew what it was about. Then when I got into coaching, they're like, oh, that's just big time Mike. And so when they see me freak out on these kids or yell at them, like they see the passion, like, oh, that's just big time being big time. That's just him. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I've, I've showed, I've shown people that, especially that, that shot of uh, being dirty with the, the blood running down my face. I always ask people, who is this? They're like, I don't know. I'm like, that's me. And they're like, no, it's not. And I have to go back through and say, yes, that's me. And they look and they look back at me because I didn't have the beard at the time or the right. gray hair. Yeah. Like, that is you. Yeah. So, yes, I've done that multiple times. That's awesome. That's hilarious. Um, someone said, why did Pac-Man cash in before the final match as opposed to wait to after for a fight a weekend big time? Like, that's all kayfabe. And, 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 we needed, we wanted to make the match good. And like, if it's the KBW finale and he just comes in to cash in at the end, you don't get all of Pac Man. But if you, you get the surprise appearance, then he gets no to be a part of the match. It makes the match hard. better. Yeah. So it's like, that's why we did it that way. Um, um, what else do we got? I have a question for y'all the next podcast with everything. You did for KBW, writing storylines, calling matches, recruiting talent, negotiating crossovers, and your experience in the indies. Would you three consider creating your own pro wrestling promotion? We would all have to be living in the same spot. Like I said, we want to do this reunion show. That's a big reason we have been pushing the membership so hard. You know, we slowly want to raise money to the end of the year, you know, to maybe do this. Um, However, um, it would take us... You know, me and Bulldoze have talked about outside business ventures together a bunch, you know. And so I could easily see, especially if I come back to Alabama, me and Doze are trying to get something started up, maybe under the KBW name, maybe under a different name. Just all depends. Um, But I definitely have a vision of starting my own promotion one day. Yes. Um, And and then I could get big time and Doze are a part of it somehow, either managing, commentating, doing something for me full time if they want to do that. Um, absolutely. Well, that'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> for sure. That'd be good. That'd I be agree. Good time. Well, it's like I've said before, I don't know if I've said it live on the pod, but you know, I just think whatever cage touches is gold. And with my business mind and his business mind, if we ever decided to do an indie show, we could make it huge. I mean, maybe not necessarily around here, but by the time we put it on YouTube, it would be huge. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And there's multiple comments on last week's podcast about us doing some type of crossover with BTW guys or some type yeah. of uh, podcast with Drew or Cam. I'm telling you guys, it's going to happen eventually. We just got to plan out the next uh, few months of podcast for sure. Because we got a What If episode. We got a potential Beast cameo. We got uh, we want to break down the leather strap match uh, with a React and a podcast. We want to break down the finale match in a podcast and a react. So there's a bunch of stuff we got in the coming weeks and months that we can't wait to get to. However, to end the podcast this week, me and Bulldozer have a fun idea where we talk about two of the best promo guys in KBW. You're talking about AK-47. You're talking about Big Time Mike. We got him right here, right now. I'll throw a name out to AK. Bulldozer will throw a name out to Mike. One minute or less. Try to keep it brief. Cut a quick promo on these guys, and then we'll finish it off with Big Time versus AK, and you can go a little longer with that one. Who would like to go first, gentlemen? Doesn't matter to me. Ladies mm. first, AK. Uh, oh, He's wow. He's already throwing shots. Shots coming early. Shots right, coming I'll, early. I'll, I mean, I got you ready. I'm still let him off easy uh, at the end. Of the, I'm not doing that anymore, so. Uh oh, uh oh, here we go. All right, first name coming at you right now, AK Magzilla. <laughs> Magzilla. 
You are lucky that I even gave you the opportunity to win the Royal Rumble. Matter of fact, I regret that decision because you don't belong in KBW. No one even knows your name unless it was for me putting you in that position. So whenever you come around, you think you might be on this podcast, you look me in the eye, you say thank you. You look me dead in the eye, you drop to your knee and you kiss my feet. Because you know that all your glory comes from me, the assassin, AK-47. That was it on you. Jacob Storm. Jacob Storm. <laughs> My God Almighty, son, wouldn't want you on the podcast if they paid you. There's no way you could follow up with Big Time Mike, the greatest sports entertainer to ever enter an arena. If we had to give you a nickname, Jacob Storm, it would be the greatest bust in the history of KBW. I could be the next member of Execution, but you know who would be a better member than me, Jacob Storm? It would be your boots. That's the only thing we saw in KBW was Jacob Storm on his back. Oh, gosh. Say it. Hell yeah. Coming right back at you, uh, AK, with The Beast. Oh, man. Where do I begin? The Beast. The member. What are the members of the Renegades? I can't even fathom him ever being in a Renegades ever again. The way he disrespected me. The way he embarrassed me. Every time he was around me, he was an embarrassment. Talking about, oh, I want to go get food at some uh, some bulldozer's house and just leave the team, leave the renegades, the group that he should love, the group that made him anything he ever wanted to be. But oh no, Beast wanted to get some pizza. Beast wanted a burger in the oven. Oh no, Beast, is that what you really want? You wanted you you looked at food more than you looked at KBW, and for that I can never forgive you. For that you deserve to be in Georgia right now. You know, twiddling your thumbs, eating your honey buns, or whatever you're doing. I don't give a damn. But now, you need to get, you need to step back and appreciate what the Renegades did for you, Beast. But no, I guess not. Enjoy your Swiss rolls. My <laughs> God. Back to you, Dozer. That's the barrel of the Beast tonight, boy. Well, I can do this forever. Oh, but I'm a kid. I'm a bad kid. My God, if there is one guy that I can't stand, it's the mask wearing, red socks wearing, flipping around like he ain't got no damn business being there, Mama Kid, the guy that everybody quote unquote loves, but can never get one over on Big Time Mike, the guy that everybody quote unquote wants to be with, but nobody could step toe to toe with Big Time Mike. Mama Kid, you don't belong on the same stratosphere as Big Time Mike, son. You're not even a twinkle in your daddy's eye to Big Time Mike, because guess what? These folks don't know you from Adam's house, cat, and you know who knows Adam's house cat, it's big Tom Mike. Oh my, gosh. <laughs> my goodness. This is... AK Paul Wall. Oh. Paul Wall. Me and you had a lot of run ins, Paul Wall. Way back when in the backstage brawl, you say, Oh, why you hit me? I, you deserve to be hit, Paul Wall. You deserve to be hit by the assassin, AK-47, because you know I am who I am. And I am different from everybody else. I do things differently in KBW. If I wanted to hit you, I will hit you with a speed with a side, with a chair, with anything, tongue tacks, a, a crutch. It doesn't matter because whatever weapon I have in my hands, Paul Wall, it will be landed on your head. Just the look of you, the gall of you just looking at me with your pathetic smile, with your pathetic little, you little, in your mind, your pathetic thing. You think you're so good. You think you're so great. Oh, I'm, I, I can spear the bulldoze. I'm, I'm tough. You're not tough, Paul Wall. You never were. No, no. That's why if you ever stepped in the ring with me again, it would be one, two, three, because you would never, ever beat the assassin, AK-47. Get that in your thick little skull. Back to you, Dozen. Uh, Last one. Let's do, let's do one for old time's sakes. Two for one. Pitbull, Great Dane. Oh, my God. We got the Wonder Twins themselves, the Great Dane and the Pitbull, or as I like to call them, the Puppy Dog and the Grinch. Tell you what, I never got the chance, but I'll tell you, they wouldn't have to pay me a dime to wrap that chain around your neck and drag your happy ass up to that ring to give you a big-time ass whipping because I drop an elbow, throw a suplex, lock in that BTA, and with everybody in these comments, I would say, it's my time, yeah. <laughs> and I'll put the chain on your little bitch ass tonight if they gave me a chance. Last one. Here we go, AK. Give it to Big Time Mike. Mm. 
All right, I gotta get, I gotta get a little prepared for this one since this is the big showdown. <clears throat> big time Mike. We've been at it for a long time at KBW, many years. We also had a good friendship going to crossovers, car rides, all that jazz. It's been a fun time. But tonight, me and you, promo battle, Dozer wants it, Cage wants it, KBW, the audience, they want it. So the assassin, AK-47, always delivers when it comes to this promo, and I would do it nonetheless. See, Big Time Mike, you walk in, you're very loud, you're very gracious, you got a lot of bark, and you got a lot of bite, you bleed everywhere, you gush, you do all these things, you're so great, you're so all alive and Big Time, but I gotta tell you something. All that is just all in your head. No one thinks of you as big time. All you are looking at is in the mirror and yourself because you're so full of it. You think you're all so great and you're so gracious, but it's not when everyone's looking at you. What they see is a little boy in a big grown man's body, and I will show you all the world what I'm talking about, and that is the truth. And I'm telling you right now, you are witnessing greatness. You forever will witness greatness. So if you ever think about stepping in the ring with me again, it won't be a big time boom, biatch. It will be me on your head with a headshot because I am different from everybody else. Okay, you are Mr. Better than you. Wait, that's not you. Never mind. You're the other guy. You're the guy that quote unquote says you are who? The French maker. The headshot maker. I said you're one headshot away from being the KBW World's Heavyweight Champion. AK, you haven't bled how I bled. You haven't suffered how I've suffered. Hell, if it wasn't for me, it wouldn't be in the KBW because these people know just as well as you know. And you look me with them beady little eyes, you some bitch, when I talk to you. Every time you go to sleep, when you wake up in the middle of the night, what do you see? You see Big Tom Mike stacks for you, blows you off his face, the top of his for you, old nasty baby, tranquilized, reaching, he's reaching, he's reaching. Because one day you will one eventually realize what everybody else eventually realizes. It doesn't matter who you are, what day it is, what time, or what's on the line. The salvation in the promised land to this podcast and for KBW. Tip went for B. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Boom. Watch. God damn. God, what God. a way to finish it all. Was, favorite, what a way to finish it all. On the that was fun, so boys. I love that. I hope you're ready for it, boys, because next week is gonna be me versus you. So we're gonna oh, we're gonna God. do it that way next week. If we if we, we run it back. So uh go. just be prepared. I hope you guys enjoyed that segment because I very that much so enjoyed that fun. segment. It was no so, hard feelings, big time. That it was, was great all fair in love and, and love and war, uh, as I say. Oh, I love this man. man. It was great. It's awesome, man. <laughs> Oh, wow. Every match needs a handshake and a hug at the end. God damn it, boys. Let me believe for a minute. Jeez. <laughs> no, I love it. It's a good time. This has been the KBW Podcast brought to you by KBW members. You'll see your name at the end of the podcast in the credits if you have been uh, a member, even from the lowest tier all the way up to the highest tier. Thank you for helping us out and uh, helping us work towards that potential reunion episode. Remember, we have a... Uh, WrestleMania preview show where we'll be announcing uh, our picks for WrestleMania and our predictions for WrestleMania. Check that out if you're watching this week. If you're watching at a later date, then go see if uh, we got our predictions correct. Uh, the newest KBW video, the KBW Triple Threat Match, will be up for the different makers as well this week. Thank you all for the support. Thank you big time for joining us again this week. And we will see you all next week on the KBW Podcast. All of our links are in the description below. Join the Discord. Follow AK on Twitch. And as well as myself and all the fun stuff. We'll see you next time. Peace.